welcome to the Quest for Connery review number 26, A Good Man in Africa. Let Damon hold it up. Yeah. Or as they, <laughs> or the, the German version, which is the only copy of the DVD we yeah. can get. The Leipzig Eld von Africa. I can't, I'm not sure. That, that was nicely done. Yeah, nicely done. Was good. Um, it's so hard to find this film. You, don't, yeah. you can't get it on English, in England, in on DVD or video. Um, so we had to Im- get it from uh, eBay off some. No, the guy, the seller was in the UK, but he'd bought a load of German DVDs. There's not even a, like a rating on it, like English ratings. It's just this twelve sticker, and um, it it wasn't worth all the trouble. And it's ten pound, ten pound fifty, and we gave it three, three out of ten. Out of ten, I like... I know it's a stark the criticism in this film. It's just. The acting first. Mm-hmm. Um, the main guy is played by Colin Friels, this half Scottish, half Australian actor. He's not he's not he's not engaging enough to empathise with, but then he's not bad enough to be a good anti hero, do you yeah, know what I mean? And he's but his acting's just poor. And he's not and then to be fair, I don't want to sound really harsh, he's not the most um, attractive looking guy. Yeah. But throughout the film he has this weird way of getting like to sleep with every the four, single woman. The four in female the... characters in the film all make a pass him at some point. All sleep with him. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. They all basically try and sleep Yeah, near enough. Um, <laughs> and I, but I think He also, can't carry a film. Because yeah, but you, but you can't blame it just on him. It's also the screenplay. There's The, the yeah. character's motivations are barely developed. You get you have to sort of like work everything out yourself and for assumptions and that sort of thing. It's based on a book by William Boyd from 1981 and he writes the film. And for me, they tried to keep too much of the... I haven't read the book, but I'm guessing he probably tried to keep too much of the book in because he's trying to make loads and loads of observations on a country in Africa. Made-up country. Yeah, made-up country. And it just seems to fail because there's so many different stories going on. And it's just... Oh, he can't focus on one. And in the end, like, there's supposed to be the point. He's called a good man in Africa because of Connery. But he has, like, the screen time what? It adds 10, up to about 10 minutes. minutes yeah, yeah, it's not very really good. Mind you, the, the time that Corinne does get on screen, he, because he's a big, this is what, 92? Four. Four, sorry, 94. He's a big enough star, so Connery demands rewrites, which, oddly enough, involve him playing golf in a scene. Yeah. Connery's favourite pastime. I think he was so paid a like, ridiculous amount for this film. Yeah, the this film's film budget had, was 20 million. Yeah, and I think it made, in the end, 2 million. You really can't see where the money's gone. It, no. It actually, it doesn't look worth 20 million. It's um, gone on Coller- Connery's paycheck, probably. Once again, like and Lee's British Drawing Gentleman. The fact that they filmed in Africa. And there was quite a you know, couple of explosions. I mean, and you've, you you should have some good support because you've got John Lithgow and Diana Rigg involved, but they're just not given enough time or, like, again, plot motivation. Yeah. So, there's too many in the writing. It, it leaves too much for the um, audience to, uh, to assume. It's just like, well, you should assume this, or you should make your own opinion of this. It's like, well, no, you're supposed to tell us as a film what's going on. I can't assume what is going on in the background. Yeah, we can't fill the plot holes ourselves. No, there's too many holes because... Connery's like, because you're supposed to apparently think that the new president of this African country is a bad guy, mm. but the one time you actually think he's a bad guy is when Connery says he's corrupt in one, one line, line. One line. There's no other suggestion that he's a corrupt politician. So we see him as a good politician because yeah. we're just showing him doing the. I mean, he tries to get stuff. Colin Friels to fund a university, and of course that sounds good, but then Connery just says in one line, "Oh no, that's bad. It's a way for him to make more money." Never explained. No. Never properly explained. Um, so we have to like infer how that would work or why he's a bad guy. And you only assume that Connery's a good man in Africa because he works in a hospital. Yeah, he's a white doctor looking after the black people yeah. and then here's a go at Colin Friels for pushing in front of them. So this film is completely disjointed. It's poorly written, basically poorly acted. Connery is all right in it. He steals the show when he's on yeah. screen. And John Lithgow, again, is not bad, but because the character is just completely pointless. Yeah. It's Another problem with this film, high, so, so many cases of stereotyping of mm. africans yeah they're all scared of a god called shango yeah they're all do the bidding of the white man yeah they're all really clumsy and paranoid and seem to be pretty useless he even calls his servant friday oh, it's like come on and they have these ridiculously kind of like thick accents i don't think the best it seems accents. at points they were dipping into sort of like 
it's supposed to be hilarious comedy, but obviously it wasn't the film. Yeah. They need to decide what it's going to be and stick to it. And you get a lot of films with that problem of like being torn between two things. It tried to be a, in a way a carry on film at points. Like yeah. Like a dodgy kind oh, of. Oh, he fell over. He fell over his golf clubs. Yeah. He <laughs> that made me laugh. He did. He's hiding in the shower. Yeah. Oh, and the Duchess of. The queen's the, the queen's the great cousin or something. Forty second in line. Who just the it's like an old woman gets naked and you see her from behind. So much ass in this film. Yeah, like, unbelievable. Actually, there so was much there ass. was there was no nudity. Just a lot. Of, like this guy, Julian. What's his name? Sorry, Colin. Freel. Colin Friel. Can't remember what he, he played. Morgan. Leafy. Leafy. Well, Connery called him Leafy. I don't understand. I, I think, I think that's his name. That. I think it's his second it's name. It's Morgan something. I swear. Oh, anyway, yeah. Uh, he walks around naked quite a lot of time. You see him from behind. It just it, anyone see that? It's just like middle aged white man. Well, there's no need mm. for it. Really, yeah, point as well. Yeah, it's not that I don't want to see it. I don't feel like I can care less if it's on the screen. Or the eight year old woman who gets naked. But right. it's just there's yeah, no need pleasure. for it. It's just and like I show the picture of Connor on the back of the doctor. There he is looking after the black child. Yeah. Oh, and there's one bit when the guy's got his trousers off and Connery's examining him. He thinks he's got a sexual transmission yeah. disease. And he says, oh, do you see anything? Connery's like, nothing of significance. <laughs> and it's just it's like, like uh. ah! <laughs> It's like, no. Actually, if I, if I could recut this film, I think it would make a great sexual education video. Yeah. Connery gives a lot of tips. He says stuff like, um, oh. always use a sheath. <laughs> and if you're going to go dipping your wick anywhere you want, you're going to get infected. <laughs> and I think that stop any kid from, you know, yeah, not Connery using condoms. Use sex education videos. Thank you, Connery. But very poor film. Don't see it. Forget it. Forgettable. Don't buy it. We only bought it because we have to watch all of his films. To be honest, you don't really trust. There's not the enthusiasm there. I want to give this back. I would sell this. Yeah. I'm gonna just sell this. If again. anybody wants this, contact us. Yeah. We'll sell it to you. Yeah, you have to at least give me ten pound fifty. All right, dude. Don't even go. So <laughs> we can we can haggle on price. Yeah. Okay. Three out of ten. Yeah. Bye.